greetings, my children! Almost at the end of the month. And did you think I forgot about the finest in illustrated horror? Of course not! Let's check in on 48 pages of pure terror. We begin with Blood of the Sky. Cam, a healer from a tribe up north, left her tribe to help another tribe infected with a plague. She was successful, even gifted four strong and beautiful reindeer for her trouble, and has made her way back home, only to find her tribe taken over by a sexist rival shaman, Baska, and her son dead. However, her husband cannot see that her son has died, believing only that he is sleeping. Knowing that Baska has done something, she has her husband stab her with her own spear, telling him that if the sky turns red the next morning, he'll know she was successful in retrieving their son. In the land of the dead, she meets Kutko, a raven and messenger of the dead. He's a deceitful sort, but trustworthy enough to tell Cam that her son was offered by Baska to a demon in return for his new power. He takes her to the beast's lair, but warns her that no weapon from the mortal plane can slay the beast. Still, she retrieves her son, and manages to impale the beast on a sword from the land. In the living world, the sky turns red, and both mother and son awaken, Cam slaying Baska for what he had done. Still, the raven demanded a price for his help. And Cam slaughters the four reindeer gifted to her. And that, according to Cam, is why the sky is red in the evening. A lovely story, my children. It's nice to know that the reason the sky is red is because of spilled blood. Next we have The Field, though the title is a little misleading since only one plant matters within it. Douglas McDaniel is a writer whose grandmother just died, leaving him her old house in the country. Douglas isn't a bad person, but he blew his money on booze, drugs, and women, so he needs to complete his next schlocky horror novel soon to actually make some cash. His neighbors, the Weavers, have bought a beautiful daughter and a 25-foot-tall prize-winning sunflower. They hope to break the Guinness World Record with it, though Douglas only has eyes for their granddaughter Sharon. Still, one night he gets up and thinks he sees someone on the hill digging around the sunflower. They find nothing, but Douglas does draw some inspiration from it. Although another night he spots the figure near the flower again and goes to investigate, finding an entire cult worshipping the flower and sacrificing a helpless woman to it. They stop him and it looks like the weavers are part of it. Until we reveal that this is just him telling the weavers the plot to his book. Everything's fine. His main character in the book survived thanks to an amulet given to him earlier in the story. But then Douglas spots the amulet on Sharon, revealing that it was all real and they tried to wipe his memory. But since he remembers now, they have to sacrifice him to the sunflower, giving it the last few feet it needs. It's good and all, but I prefer how he described it in the book, that the dead bodies they killed for the sunflower rose up to kill the cult. Both good ideas, just different. After a look into some real-world cults and their tragic endings, we have our final tale. Murder Side! Two men, Jake and Johnny, fall off a roof. Jake survives and tells the police that he and Johnny had been dating the same woman, but she could not choose between the two. He says that Johnny came to him one night while he was on the roof, intent on killing him, but instead both fell over the roof. Unfortunately for Jake, a voice starts coming in, saying that the police won't buy his garbage story. And indeed, it's not helped by the woman they were dating going missing. Jake figures that Johnny killed her before going after him, but the voice keeps telling him that he's going to crash and burn soon. Some kind of poltergeist seems to haunt Jake, throwing around everything in his apartment. Going to the roof, he wonders if Johnny's ghost is attacking him. But no, it turns out to be his own soul! He was supposed to die from the fall, but he lived and became separated from his soul. But he needs to be dead so he can move on to hell, where he belongs for killing both the woman and Johnny. And so his own soul finishes the job properly, pushing him off the roof to his proper death. Well, the cops may never know what really happened, but at least you all do now, my children! <laughs> this comic sucks! 